You're watching Keystone Science. And in today's episode, we're going to show you how to make your very own AM radio transmitter. So one quick disclaimer before we get started. This project will broadcast frequencies that are probably banned in your country. By that I mean without a radio license you're definitely not allowed to broadcast at the frequency that I'm going to be doing. And so in this video I'm only going to be using an antenna that'll make it go a maximum of probably a thousand feet. This way my radio waves will not be strong enough to do any interference outside of my own property. And so before you build this project make sure that you do know the rules of your area and make sure that you're not breaking them as it can be a pretty hefty fine if you do. So with that said, let's jump straight into building this very simple circuit. Here's the first circuit that you can use, and quite frankly, the most simple one. Over here we have our audio in. And so then the only two components you need besides that are going to be a transformer like this, and then also a 1 megahertz crystal oscillator. And then attached to that crystal oscillator we have our antenna, and then also a DC power supply. And so let's go ahead and build this out onto a breadboard and see how it sounds. This is what the crystal oscillator looks like. As you can see, it has four rounded corners and one sharp corner. This sharp corner is going to tell us the correct orientation when connecting it up. And so as you can see in my circuit, that sharp corner is going to be at the bottom left hand corner. So first let's insert it into our breadboard, making sure that each pin is on its own independent rail. Now with it connected up to the breadboard, you can see I have it oriented in the same way as the circuit below. So first we can begin by connecting the bottom right hand pin over to ground. The next component we need is the transformer to modulate the signal. Here I have two different transformers that I've used. For me this larger one, which came out of the control panel on a microwave oven, seems to work better. However, a small one like this, which I'm pretty sure came out of an old TV board, also works. As you can see using the multimeter, we can see the different connection points. This side over here has 14.9 ohms, Well, this side over here is 520. Now depending on which coil we use for which side will give us different results. I've found though, by using the lower resistance coil on the audio inside, we tend to get a higher signal out up here. This is because the voltage from the audio in is being stepped up, so therefore it's modulating this a little bit more. However, I have also noticed if you use the higher winding on the audio side, it does actually give you a higher quality audio sound, just not quite as far as broadcasting and not quite as loud on the radio. And so really, you can choose either way you want. However, if you test it and you don't hear anything, then try flipping the transformer around and testing it again. For convenience sake, I'm going to solder on these four wires onto the transformer. Now I'm going to connect one end of the transformer to the top left hand corner of the oscillator. And the other end of the transformer can go to our positive power rail. To connect the other end of the transformer to our audio in, I'm just going to connect these alligator clips to this aux cord here on the different segments. Then the alligator clips connected up to that aux cord can be connected up to the two different wires on the other side of the transformer. Then the other end of your aux cord can be connected up to an audio device such as a phone. Now an antenna needs to be connected up to the top right hand corner, so I'm going to connect a jumper wire. And then to that jumper wire, I'm going to connect this alligator clip that'll act as our antenna. And so now with that done, we should be able to connect it up to our power supply and give it a test run. For my power supply, I'm going to be using this variable DC power supply that I have. However, if you don't have one of these power supplies, you could use around 4 AA batteries to get the 6 volts that I'm testing at. So now the positive of our power supply can be connected up to the positive rail, and the negative can be connected up to the negative rail. So now let's turn this AM radio on and see if it's broadcasting. As you can see, we can first hear some chatter on the radio, but right when I get to 1000 MHz, we hear a high-pitched noise and then silence. Okay, so now I have my phone pulled up, let's go ahead and hit the play button and see if it plays onto the radio. And so as you can hear, it is successfully playing the song over the circuit. Now let's try moving the radio a little bit further away and see if we're still getting a good signal. As you can see from about here, we can still hear it slightly, and by the way, that's probably about 8 feet away. Now let's try connecting up that antenna to a piece of metal and see if the range increases. Okay, so now I have the antenna hooked up to that metal pipe that's inside the shed, probably a gas line. And as you can hear, even further away now, we're getting a better reception. So now let's go outside and see if we're still getting a reception. Okay, so now I'm outside and you can hear that we're still getting a pretty good reception from it, so let's go a little bit further away. Right now we're around 500 feet away from the transmitter as it's in that building over there. And as you can hear, we're still getting the signal quite well, so let's go a little bit further. Okay, so right around here is where it begins to cut out. I can turn it up so you can hear it. Keep in mind, it is going through concrete, and I think the main reason it's cutting out right now is that there's a big metal fence to the left of me. Anyways, now with that test done, let's go inside and take a look at the circuit and see if we can tweak it up just a little bit. So this circuit right here that we have shown is very, very simple. Practically anyone can put it together like this without any knowledge of electronics, pretty much. And also another amazing part about this is that it draws so little current that it registers as a zero zero on my power supply. And so basically with this thing, if you're powering it with four AA batteries, it could run for a very long time before it would run out of power. 
Okay, so now as a test, I have the leads on this transformer flipped around so you guys could hear the other variation. As you can hear, the sound is clear, however, it's not quite as loud when I turn it all the way up and such. And so from this, it's going to be transmitting at less of a range than the last one, or at least less of an audible range. So now one question you may be wondering is how can I change the transmitting volume on this? To answer that, we can use a circuit like this. As you can see, it is a bit more complicated than the last circuit we used, which was primarily just this and an audio input. However, if you were to use this circuit, the audio input would go in here, and then the other end of the audio input would just be connected to ground, like over here. From this circuit, by tuning this potentiometer, you can adjust the volume transmitted through this. Now, the phone already does have a volume control like this that would do the same thing, however, this amplifies the phone from more than what it usually goes at, so you can get louder than the phone could naturally achieve. Anyways, this circuit centers around the LM386 op-amp chip. I have used these in the past in this very same setup to get an audio amplifier. However, currently I actually don't have any of these chips. I ordered some a little while back, but they haven't yet arrived. Since I do not have that chip, I'm still going to be demonstrating what would be happening using an audio amplifier I already have. For my amplifier, I'm just going to be using this old stereo set that I have. And so for the audio input, I'm just going to be using these two wires that come out that normally connect to speakers. Anyways, now with the amplifier hooked up, let's go ahead and go test the range of this. Okay, you can hear it slightly coming out around here, amongst all the talking anyways. If I turn the tone down a bit like a did just barely, you can hear the more bass notes inside of it. That's just perfect because for me it's not going too far out of my property, probably only by about 150 feet or so. You may be able to notice that staticky sound like you hear right there. That sound is actually occurring because it sounds like a storm is coming in. And if you want to do something fun, you can actually turn to any AM channel and you can listen to lightning like that. And so that could be lightning miles away right now that are coming from the storm, like that right there just barely. And when the lightning is going down, it's creating that static charge going through the entire atmosphere, releasing tons of radio waves and then hitting this and then interfering with the amplitude modulation. And sure enough, according to the weather report, there is supposed to be some lightning very soon tonight. But anyways, going back to the circuit, let's go ahead and learn how this AM transmitter works. Okay, so now I've disconnected all this transformer and everything else from the circuit except for the oscillator. And in fact, here with this, you can see when I make the antenna just this short wire, the broadcasting range of the circuit dramatically decreases. Now with my oscilloscope, I'm going to attach one end of the probe to the antenna. And as you can see on the oscilloscope, we get this AC wave pattern that's being emitted from positive to negative. Now if you want to know what's causing it to go up and down, I highly recommend that you go watch my piezoelectric video. These crystal oscillators use a piezoelectric crystal inside to vibrate at that same frequency. And so the piezoelectric crystals in here are set to the dimensions so that they vibrate at 1 MHz. Now here I have the probe just disconnected hanging in the air and as you can see it's picking up some of the radio frequencies. Also, if you can see, when I bring it closer to the antenna the voltage does raise on the oscilloscope. Now the electrons are actually oscillating on the antenna moving up and down. And due to a property called induction, when electrons move through a wire, a magnetic field is created. Since the electrons on this are alternating, going up and down at the frequency of this at 1 MHz, which by the way means about 1 million times per second, then the magnetic field here is also alternating. If a magnetic field is placed near an inductor, it will create a current through it. I go more into depth into this property in my induction heating video, where we actually utilized this to create eddy currents to heat up metal, and so that also will be linked in the description. However, basically, this alternating magnetic field causes the electrons to move inside the receiver. And then due to the electrons moving inside the receiver, we get the sine wave created. And then from the antenna inside the circuit, it goes over to another coil. This coil is connected to another coil through a transformer, which is then connected to a capacitor. And so then using this equation, the value of this inductor and this capacitor here gives us a resonant frequency. And if that resonant frequency here is the same as the one being broadcast over here, it'll get through that signal while ignoring near everything else. And then of course from here, since it's very very weak, it'll then go off to an amplification circuit. And so now since we know the basics on how radio waves are sent and received, let's learn how they carry information. Now I have the circuit hooked back up to the transformer. And for the audio input, I'm going to be using the signal generator. Currently it's set to 3.8 kilohertz and you can see roughly what that wave should look like, although the probe I'm using to measure this is a bit messed up on this old oscilloscope, so it's a bit hard to see. Now as you can see, when I play a frequency on the oscilloscope, these are vibrating up and down a little bit, but their actual frequency isn't changing. And in fact, if we zoom way out, we can actually see the wave that we're playing manifest by the change of the amplitude up here. And as you can see, when I change the frequency, you can actually see the change in amplitude manifest out. So what we're seeing here is the reason that AM radio is called AM radio, and that is due to the amplitude modulation. And so say if the frequency we were playing looked somewhat like this, then we'd see that the amplitude of our carrier frequency is actually changing just due to where the wave is going. But the actual frequency of the carrier frequency is not itself changing, just the amplitude. And then going back to the receiver over here, that slight change in amplitude creates a slight change in the magnetic field being transmitted. And then that slight change in the magnetic field creates a slight change in the current being induced over here. And then when you amplify it up, that slight change becomes apparent in the sound you hear. 
and so in its most simple form, this is how some of the very first radios worked. Except for, of course, this would actually be a little bit different, since inside of the circuit we have transistors and such like that, and they would actually be using vacuum tubes. Now guys, keep in mind, if you try this at home, be sure that you don't use too long of an antenna to maybe keep your transmission range only up to probably around 100 feet. But especially at a frequency like 1000, it's right in the middle of what all radios can tune to, so it's probably going to give it quite a bit of a stir. But if you're just getting into electronics, a circuit like this would be a great way to, for instance, listen to your own phone inside your car. And by doing that, of course, you just need to turn on your car radio and then tune into the frequency being broadcast with it connected up to your phone. I'm going to solder this onto a perf board so you guys can see it in a more portable version attached to this battery pack here. And this battery pack has four AA batteries which should get it up to six volts just like we are running it at. And here's the final result. As you can see, I added on this aux port here so that it could easily connect up to your phone. And the battery pack already has a switch to turn the circuit on and off. For the antenna, I have a meter long of solid core wire. And on the end of that wire, I attached this alligator clip. This way I can clip this onto anything metal if I need a bigger antenna for any reason. And as you can hear, this more compact version works fine. So now you know a little bit how AM transmitters work and how you can make your very own. Sorry by the way if you can hear the raindrops as the storm is picking up quite a bit outside. If you enjoyed this video and or learned something new, I'd really appreciate it if you left a thumbs up as it really helps the channel. And if you'd like to see my weekly science videos, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below so they'll show up in your subscription newsfeed. If you have any topic ideas that you would like to see me cover, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And so with that said, please remember to be safe and have a wonderful day. You're watching Keystone Science. And in today's episode, we're going to show you how to make your very own plasma globe.